Good morning. <laughs> I just spilled coffee. I'm going to get some tissue and mop it up while we chat. Luckily, it was a small spill. Hope that you are all doing well. You know, all things considered, I'm doing well too. I have a really busy day today. Uh, I really, I'm getting a bit weary of these really busy days. I don't, I don't like, I do like to be busy. There's no doubt about that. But I don't like to be so busy that I feel like I can't relax at all during the day. That's not a pleasant feeling. And that's happened this entire semester. And I just really need a break from that. So we're almost there. Uh, the last week of class is next week here at the university that um, I work at. So we're almost, we're almost there. Uh, and the reason that I'm so busy, part of the reason that I'm so busy today is that I'm taking the day off tomorrow to take a little day journey with Mike and the kids. So that'll be, that'll be really nice. So I just need to get through this day. I've got them on the reference desk again <laughs> this morning and it just makes, um, I was thinking about trying to record this yesterday just to prevent this very problem that I seem to be having now on Thursday mornings that um, I'm on the desk at nine and I'm rushing trying to get this recorded. So, but anyway, that's not for you to worry about. I'm managing it and it's going to be, it's going to be fine, you know, but it's interesting because I was, I wrote earlier this week about just sort of the difficult late week, last week and weekend that I had just emotionally, spiritually, I was just kind of down. And um, I, so it was, it was a tough little stretch. And I was um, thinking about ideas for my next Catholic mom article because I had totally forgotten that I have a deadline coming up and they luckily have a very organized and wonderful editor who sends us reminders. God bless her. And so I got the reminder and she gives us plenty of time. So I have until next Thursday. So I, I knew I still had plenty of time, but I just, I had no ideas. And I mentioned that to Christina and she said, Oh, uh, she had an idea right from the outset. She says, you should write about your experience over the weekend that, you know, I wrote about also on the blog on Tuesday about spiritual sort of spiritual dryness, darkness. If we want to be very dramatic, we could term it spiritual attack. <laughs> um, and I said, that's a really good idea. And over the course of the next couple of days, it all kind of coalesced. I need to work on that actually, if it's quiet out at the reference desk in terms of actually getting it together. But the more I thought about that, the more sense it made. And um, the thought came to me that it would be nice to tie in uh, my devotion to Our Lady Star of the Sea, since she helps us to navigate um, difficult waters, if you will. And so that it all just it all just kind of came together. So I was very pleased about that. And that's what's kind of on my heart right now. So I figured that I would make that um, something that I would talk about with you for a few minutes here today. Um, so that Catholic mom piece will be coming out a week from Monday. So it's still a little ways off. And of course it isn't written yet. So, uh, <laughs> but this is the topic. So if you're interested in this topic, then um, you'll want to uh, peek back at it. And I would love to have you chime in in the comments over at Catholic mom when it does come out. But, you know, as I had alluded to on Monday, you know, I just occasionally will go through these little, um, stretches of time where it just feels like everything is so overwhelming and a struggle for me. And I don't have the same types of spiritual consolations that I sometimes do. And that makes it even harder. So, you know, this week has been, it's been good. It's been a lot better. Um, I can slowly feel myself kind of climbing out of that um, difficult place, but it's, you know, it's something that really, I'm much more aware of it than when I was younger. And it just, it takes more of a toll because I have more responsibilities now. And so therefore I really feel very guilty and responsible for the happiness of the people that are immediately in my life. So my kids, my husband, obviously, and even going out to my friends that I see here at work every day. And, um, you know, even those of you who are my friends that I don't get to see in person every day, but you can, you know, just still tell if something's going on with me and I just know that I'm not myself or I'm not able to help you all as much as usual, you know, be able to just, um, 
provide any kind of support that I would normally be able to provide. It's like I'm all stunted, you know? And so I take that a lot harder. And so I was thinking about it this morning as I was getting ready for work and about the conversation I was going to have with you all today. And I was thinking, well, you know, I already wrote about that and I'm going to be writing about that for Catholic Mom. And so maybe I need to come up with another topic. So then I go downstairs and um, Anne is down there. She just finished her breakfast and I'm all rushing like I always am in the morning because I don't get up early enough. And I still need to eat. I need to pack lunches. I need to get other stuff ready to leave for work. And um, Mike was taking Henry to school, so he was taking care of that. So I had these other things to do and Anne calls me over <laughs> and she wants me to read with her. She uh, had gone to the library, the public library yesterday with Mike and Henry in the afternoon and she had a whole stack of new cute board books that she brought home and she wanted, and I love reading especially new books, because you know how it is with kids. They want you to read, they, they glom onto something, and then it's nothing but that book <laughs> or nothing but that movie for the next six weeks. I mean, they just, they want you to, again, 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 children in repetition. I know it's good for them and that's normal, but it gets, it gets tiresome for adults. Like, oh God, the same book. I mean, I just, I could recite it by heart, you know, some of them, because you've read it so many times. And so she had new material. So I was like, fabulous. Um, let me come over and see what you have. But I was feeling a little pressed for time. So uh, I, she, I wanted to read one book with her. And of course, she wanted me to read two. And I ended up reading two. And that was the highlight of the morning, you know, is one of those things that when you finally just allow yourself to come out of your own head and slow down for a few minutes that you're able to see things in their proper perspective and appreciate them in a whole new way. And so she hands me a book and I'm trying to find, I tried to find it before I started recording so that I could put it in the show notes and I, I don't remember the title and it's possible because it's from the library. It's possible that it's something that's out of print, you know, because sometimes they have books that are, they obviously have new books, but you know, they have things in their collection that are older. And so you can't necessarily find them anymore. So I don't, I don't know if it uh, exists in print anymore. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find that or not, but really that's not all that important. Um, the point being the following, I start reading this book to Anne and, and the title was something like, lots of little penguins, something like that. And to, to back up just for a moment, when I was jotting down ideas for my Catholic mom piece about, you know, spiritual difficulties, struggles, um, I had come up with like a list of five things that I wanted to talk about that helped me personally, and maybe they would help somebody else. And one of the things on the list was to allow yourself to do whatever it is that recharges you for a short spell. So for introverts, which of which I am a member of that club, it is time, quiet time to yourself because you are charged, recharged, refreshed from within as an introvert. And so I really do need, you know, when you have small kids and everything's always noisy in your house and somebody's always there and, you know, that's wonderful, but sometimes you just need that you know, I just want to go off here for 20 minutes by myself and I want to just mindlessly scroll through Facebook, maybe do a little online shopping, maybe go on the message boards on Ravelry, the craft sites that I love so much and just read what everybody's writing about, what they're knitting and what yarn they're using. And I just want to fall into that world. Or maybe you read a book, any of those things, right? You just, you're able to just think <laughs> without being interrupted. And that's one of the things that for me, when you're trying to come out of a little funk, um, emotional slash spiritual, that really helps is to just have that, that time. And so in this book, back to my reading with Anne, this was the story. There was a penguin who lived, um, like by herself. She was like, she didn't live in a penguin community, whatever you would call that. Um, and whether that applies to real um, specific kinds of penguins that exist in the world, or if, if it's just part of the fictional universe of the story, I am not certain. But in the story, the penguin was by herself, and she lived, you know, in this cold Arctic place. And uh, so the penguin was very happy for the quiet, but she got lonely. And so one day, she finds a hat. I don't remember if like a bird brought the hat or if she just found the hat, but 
inside the hat was a baby penguin. <laughs> and the baby penguin comes out and she's very happy. And then another baby penguin comes out. And then she's not so lonely anymore. And then next thing you know, lots of little baby penguins come out of this hat. And so she's got this whole colony now of baby penguins. And she was not lonely anymore, but she was also really busy and really tired. <laughs> This is mimicking, of course, the real life um, experiences of parents everywhere. And it's the book, you know, the end of the book is a board book, so it was very short. And, you know, at the end of the story, it says that sometimes the penguin still needed to go off by herself for a few minutes of quiet time. But she was much happier when she was able to be back with the baby penguins and not be lonely anymore. That really struck a chord with me this morning, that silly little board book, because that was one of the things that I had mentioned on my list of five for Catholic Mom, is that introverts, you know, it's different for extroverts, but whatever it is for you, that you need to allow yourself to have a, just a short, brief window where you, where you recharge in that way. And just like the penguin, I need, needed time this week to just you know, Christine is coming in a month. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And I wanted to get a few new clothes. Um, you know, I really needed some new things for my spring summer wardrobe because I had weeded out my closet recently for things that, you know, had just been around and I wasn't wearing anymore. And they had been through the wash too many times. And so I went online and, you know, spent some time just picking out a few new spring clothes. And, and I, cause I love online shopping. I hate going to the stores in person. It's another introvert thing. So so I did that and I just, that really helped this week, just allowing myself to kind of be interior and think these happy thoughts and spend that time set aside. But of course I'm thinking ahead to when I'm gonna be with my family, Christina and her family, and we're all gonna be together in this loud, joyous group. And that's going to be absolutely spectacular. And it's just this balance between the two things for me personally. And that really helps when I'm feeling in one of these little, um, like I, had, I called it a funk earlier, which I think is very apt. When I'm in one of these places, funk places, it, I need that little set aside time to recharge. And the, the penguin story just really made me smile. And it made me think, you know, sometimes when I'm in my house, I rarely get the house to myself. There's always somebody there. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. I mean, I do need that time sometimes to myself, but I would be so lonely to always be there by myself. I just, I covet especially time with my husband because he's an introvert too. And so we can have quiet time together, um, like parallel solitude, I call it. And we're, he's very good about that. Like he wants his quiet time too. And so we can be, I, but I love having him in the same room. Just we'll be there. He's reading, I'm reading, fire crackling. We're happy. And then we'll come together, of course. Um, but just having like that short little bit of time where we can each have that time just inside our own heads and then you feel refreshed and that really gave me a smile so i talk about a few other things in the catholic mom piece um about going to confession about um other things involving prayer and uh, a few things that i can't think of right now which is totally unsurprising because i'm always forgetting something um inside my own head there's always a lot going on in there it's not necessarily coherent, but there's always something going on in there. But, you know, I have five ideas and I would love to hear what your ideas are for coming out of these types of uh, situations um, when the piece goes live. But yeah, um, I'm feeling a lot better. I did go to confession this week, too. I've been talking to Samantha about that um, and her encouragement really helped me to go on Tuesday. Like, okay, I've been telling Samantha I'm going to go to confession. I really, I have to stop and go instead of just talk about it. And um, yeah, it wasn't anything dramatic. You know, the angels didn't come down and sing or anything when I was done, but I just quietly felt increasingly better. And I think that that's what it's all about, right? You know, so there's confession, there's the quiet time, but there's also the together time that I have a community that is supportive and wonderful and prays for me and I pray for you. And I do think that's important when you're feeling down is to like take the focus off of myself and to focus on other people. So, you know, I can start thinking about whatever's going on with you and <laughs> praying and thinking about that just suddenly takes me out of that 
like dark place and then I can think about I want to help somebody else and I need to be to put my best foot forward to be there for them so um, so when, when Samantha and I were talking um, on Tuesday that that helped me to think about it in that context that you know we need to support each other and I need to be at my best so that I can help her and all of you and Mike and the kids and there you have it right so that's what was on my heart this morning. I would love to hear from you about your thoughts on dealing with spiritual struggles. Um, I wrote about the book club yesterday. I am so excited about our upcoming summer season um, with Church of Spies about Pius XII during World War II. And I can't wait to get started reading, but I really need your feedback. And I haven't actually checked today to see if there are any new comments. There might be. I'll do that very shortly. But um, I really need your feedback as to how we should read it. Should we read it over the course of the entire summer? Should we read it over the course of a shorter period of time? It is a longer book, about 240 some pages, lots of chapters, like 26 chapters. Maybe the chapters are on the shorter side. I haven't downloaded it yet, but I'm going to. I looked at the sample on um, Amazon just to get an idea, an idea. So write in with your thoughts. I know if you're getting it from the library, which maybe some of you will, it is a little um, what I consider on the higher end in terms of, because um, I think it's still only out in hardback. It's not out in paperback yet. And for a Kindle book, it's, I think, $15. That's expensive for a Kindle book. I'm, I'm going to download it because I just, I need to read on my Kindle. It's just for my eyes at this stage of my life, I, I need it. So, um, but for many of you, you may be getting it from the library. And so you'll have just a certain borrowing window. So maybe you'd rather read it in a shorter period and talk about it all at once. But I would just love for you to tell me exactly what you're going to be, um, how you're going to be procuring the book and what your preferred method for discussing it with me would be. So do write in. I love you all. I'm so grateful and appreciative for you. And I feel so blessed to be a part of this community um, within my blog and just within social media generally. So thank you. God bless you all. And I'll be dying to hear from you. So write in and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.